This next guy, really funny. I don't know anyone who works harder. Guy just creates all sorts of stuff. I'm really proud of him. His uh, wife's baby crazy, and I hope he's getting some. Give it up for Jared Cullum. John. All right, glad to be here. Thanks for having me. I um, have been making a lot of changes in my life. A lot of things have changed lately. I thought I'd tell everybody about. Um, the first of which is I've decided uh, in the mornings when I get my coffee, I am no longer going to refer to the cashier as milady. Because <laughs> uh, I'm not British and that's weird. <laughs> and the cashier is a man. <laughs> That's changed. I've decided to join a soccer team, which has been fun. Because uh, I must have woke up in the morning and looked in the mirror and said, You know what, world? I have not disappointed enough people in my life. <laughs> it's time to get active. Uh, and this is another change I've made. My wife, she's, since we've been married, she drags me to these open houses to look at houses and compare them to ours and get ideas. But she, then she feels bad because we're not gonna buy the house, but she makes me have the excuse, because she doesn't wanna look like a bitch. So what I've been doing uh, is when we get to the end of the tour, uh, I've been slipping in subtle racism, <laughs> and then sort of indirectly blaming it on her, so that she looks like a bitch. This is what I do, so when we get to the end of the tour, I'm like, uh, oh, you know, the kitchen was a good, uh, good. I love what she did with the color, and the, uh, the bathtub was a little bit small. But, um, is the mailman black every day? <laughs> oh, there's a dimmer switch. That's nice. Uh, that's a nice uh, I like the earth tone in the fireplace. It's a really nice touch. But, um, how many large wooden crosses would you say would fit in the basement? Um, I love the chandeliers. I've also decided to be more smug. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it'll take God bless us one and all. <laughs> I hope you get heat, man. I hope. Uh, <laughs> Here's another thing I've been trying. I've been trying to be more smug in my day-to-day -day, uh, outgoing things. Uh, and to do that, I've decided to introduce... Uh, I've decided the, the first step to becoming more smug is to use the word pedestrian more. But only as an adjective. So you're a little confused. This is how that works. Uh, what are you having to drink, man? How pedestrian. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. And then I think step two to being more smug is to tell someone that I that I just I don't care what they're talking about, and I do that by uh, taking an extra long time to tell them that I don't care. And this is how that works, um, sir. Uh, what do you, uh, ma'am? What do you have to drink? <laughs> oh, uh, we'll tell you what you can do. Uh, you can go across the street to the 7-Eleven and stand in line, see if you can get yourself a Monterey Jack. Who gives a fuck taquita? <laughs> see what I'm saying? See what I'm... It's working for me. And this is, the, this is step three that I've been enjoying lately, is to do the same thing, tell them I don't care, but take no time to tell them that I don't care. And this is how that works. Um, sir, uh, what do you do for a living? Who gives a fuck? It's <laughs> how pedestrian. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to like, I'm just trying to figure out who I am because I just recently graduated from art school, and it's nothing to be proud of because it took six years to get out of art school, and all I got was a diploma and a darkened heart of broken dreams. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, yeah, the graphic designer in the audience. Yeah. No, because 
because that's what I am, a graphic designer during the day. But is that who I am? Am I a graphic designer? Because let me tell you what I do as a graphic designer in the day. I sit down and I listen to five advertisers and I just nod my head and I say, yes, uh, I think that's a great idea uh, to have the advertisement just be a pair of breasts. <laughs> and then cut to the woman rubbing the latest Air Jordan shoe on her body. <laughs> And then I get up from the meeting and I go back to my studio and I say, if you need me guys, I'll be in my studio picking up the shattered pieces that once was my broken dreams <laughs> and listening to Porter's head until I cry myself to sleep. <laughs> Every fucking day. <laughs> I'm just trying to be more honest is the thing, you know. Because I love, like, I think it's so beautiful how kids can be so honest, you know what I'm saying? I think that's so cool. Like my nephew, he's nine, he came to me yesterday. He's like, hey, Uncle Jared, uh, you looked a lot fatter since the last time I saw you. <laughs> and in that spirit, I was like, oh, hey, thanks, little buddy. I appreciate it. Uh, oh, uh, Santa isn't real. <laughs> Get used to the word accident. <laughs> There's some truth for you, little asshole. <laughs> I don't want to be too honest, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to be the, I don't want to be a shitty parent someday. Like the guy who's like, "Hey, who's this little guy?" And I'm like, "Oh, uh, this is my career as a writer." <laughs> I see he's getting along well with your career as a ballerina. <laughs> Just I don't know, you know. I was trying to figure out how to like identify him, like. They're trying to resolve what is identity. You know what I mean? Like, what exactly is identity? Like, I've resolved that identity is essentially just the things we project to other people, right? It's the things that we let other people know are ourselves and our values. And uh, and it used to be kind of hard because you had to just lie in conversation. You know what I'm saying? Just be like, yeah, I'm doing fine. And I love my kids. I'm happy with the choices I've made. But now it's a whole new level of like easy. You know what I mean? Because you have the Facebook profile pictures that people, and it's just constant projection of this is who I am, this is who I am. And I know this because a lot of my friends are comedians. So their profile pictures are them holding a microphone with this expression. <laughs> Which says to a stranger, I'm eccentric. Uh, and I just got done doing a joke about the homeless. <laughs> Or masturbation. <laughs> or masturbating the homeless. <laughs> but that's all Facebook is, though. It's just like constant projection of this is who I am, this is who I am. And it's never anything like it should be, like good. It's never like, hey, look, here's a picture of me giving a sandwich to a homeless guy. No, it's just, hey, this is who I am. These are all my friends. Look at all my friends. Look, I own a guitar. <laughs> Look, look how sexy I look in that bikini six years ago from this angle. <laughs> you know, because I don't know who I am. Like, I'm trying to be more, I don't know, like tough, I guess, because I, my wife got me a, a motorcycle. I've been driving it, and I love my motorcycle. Like, it's so much fun to drive. But I, I have to say, the best part about owning a motorcycle, the most, the best part is, it's not feeling badass or the respect that you get. It's waving to other motorcycles. Because you do this like, like flick. It's like this like, it's like an air high five. It's really cool. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I'll tell you what you can't do. What I did when I first got on and I saw Fat Guy on a Harley, and I was like, hi! <laughs> I'm on one too! Wanna be my friend? <laughs> oh god. I can't drink too much rum. I'm really full right now. Like, I'm like, uh, god, I'm, you know that full? Like, you know that full you get when you've eaten a whole large pizza and three bags of crab chips by yourself? <laughs> Because you're home alone and a lady at a bar called you fat. And you get on Facebook and see none of your friends from high school talk to you anymore because they're all either really religious.
therapists are successful now. Your therapist says you should stop being so introverted. Your wife says you should stop ignoring her. And you know that kind of fool. Like I'm. But I'm doing all right, though, you know. Just some things, like, bother me, you know. I'll tell you something that bothers me is, uh, like, what happened to politeness? Like, nobody opens the door for anybody anymore. You know what I mean? Like, what happened to, like, I was, in a, I was leaving a blockbuster the other day, and I went through, I held the door for someone, and as I was turning my head to, to, to turn out the next door, it was like, I took it upside the head, and I overreacted. I was like, hey, thanks a lot, you fucking dick. <laughs> and then she got all mad. And all of a sudden, I'm the asshole. I was like, look, little, little girl. <laughs> all right, thank you all very much. <laughs> all right, Jerry Collins. Keep it going. <laughs> Keep clapping. Is anyone wearing a yellow shirt? Because I wrote a yellow shirt joke. I uh, have to wait. <laughs> to wait. Um, before uh, this next guy comes up, I want to prime you with a uh, little bit of advice. Never tell a guy in a wheelchair that you also have a wheelchair that you use exclusively for your large penis. <laughs> it's a dick move. The creator of Cafe DM. A mind, genius in his own right, bearded and ready to perform. Everyone give it up for Joe Hafke. Louder, louder. Gotta kill a dragon. How's it going, guys? All right, it's good to be here. Did you guys have a good 4th of July? Yeah. I guess I did too. It was okay. Here's a, I don't know. I, here's how you shouldn't spend your 4th of July. You shouldn't get invited to your friend's river house and as soon as you get there complain that she doesn't have a jet ski and then smoke a blunt and then dive in the river and swim a half mile upstream to a pier owned by a retired Navy general and pull yourself out of the water, a little puke dribbling down your beard because you're exhausted, and ask the general if he's impressed enough with your swimming skills to let you ride on his jet ski. <laughs> That's what you shouldn't do. Then you shouldn't go back four hours later after you've slammed like five Sam Adams pints, fucking flay your way down there in a floaty, and challenge him to naval warfare. You ready for Armageddon at the hand of Commodore Kickass? General Pussy? That's how you shouldn't spend your full shot. That was, uh, oh, that got in my nose. That was cool. You guys, I was uh, driving to Georgia recently, and there's uh, a lot of billboards like just north of the South Carolina border. And there's like a hundred every mile. And they're all for like the same outlet store, you know, like Mucho Cheapo, like blow up the moon with our fireworks. <laughs> but like interspersed in between all those was this one billboard that said, uh, greetings from Hungry Town. I'm sad and I lost my family. And then it had the picture of a sad-eyed puppy looking at you through a chain link fence. And no other information. That was it. What the fuck? It's like a giant billboard postcard from Sarah McLaughlin's backyard. <laughs> What's sad? That kind of like it kind of ruined my day a little bit. It was sad. It was kind of like, what? Why is the puppy sad? I'm hungry. What the fuck? Anonymous billboard? Like, if you want to ruin my day, let's do it. Let's drop a guy playing a violin in the backseat of my car, you know, just playing it all sad, and then every mile or so, just have a big billboard with a picture of one of my dead pets on it. Maybe the first one can be, like, my dead, my dead gerbil that I had in the kindergarten, and it can say, like, greetings from I'm not alive anymore, town. I hope my three-day-long life taught you the lesson that you can't keep a gerbil in a crown box. 
<laughs> and then the next billboard could be me sending that same gerbil off into the afterlife by burying it in my backyard. And then a mile later, there'll be another billboard of that same plot of my backyard with a big weed growing out of it. And it'll say, your gerbil made great weed fertilizer. You know, I'm just saying, anonymous billboard people, if you're going to ruin my day, then fucking ruin my day. Don't be a pussy about it. That's all. I was watching it on TV the other day. I was, flipping, I was flipping through channels, and I saw this show, and I thought that it said, uh, Bears in Apparel. And I flipped back real quick, because I was like, oh, that's going to be adorable. I'd love to see a bear in a Cosby sweater and shoes. <laughs> but it turns out I misread it. It's Bears in Peril. Uh, yeah, and it's about scientists that get in a helicopter and fly around and shoot polar bears with tranquilizer darts. <laughs> And the reason they do it is to study why they've been acting deranged and crazy, which is interesting, because I think that's exactly what you'd do if periodically a helicopter was flying around and shooting you with sleep. <laughs> I, uh, grown up, I, uh, grown up I was raped Catholic. Wait, <laughs> shit. <laughs> I do, uh, I do, I do, recently I, I remember um, when I like stopped believing in Christianity, like the moment I stopped believing in Christianity, it was when I was about 13 and I found out that my youth director at the church I was going to had just gone to a David Lee Roth solo concert. <laughs> I was like, this is bullshit! What the fuck? Do you guys not know who David Lee Roth is? <laughs> <laughs> He's the opposite of Jesus. <laughs> I, uh, I I like to when I go to store. I hate pennies, and when I go to gas stations and shit, I just I throw the pennies away, like right away as soon as I walk out of there, because it's American. Uh, but I like it for two reasons: one, it like keeps my pockets light, and two, it makes it really fun when beggars come up to me, you know, like real mangy looking street urchins carrying like a, a beat up. Big bird stuffed animal in a plastic 7-Eleven bag filled with sauerkraut. And they ask you for some money, and you're just like, fuck no, I threw it away! <laughs> I, uh, I just moved in with my girlfriend, which, uh, you know, thanks a lot, guy. <laughs> It's great. I, we have a good relationship. It's good. It's fun. But sometimes I just fucking reject her love for no reason. And we say, we, we say, you know, I love you to each other. And the other day she was like, I love you. And I was like, what? Really? What the fuck? Really? I jerked off to Avatar. You love me? You love me? Wow. I, uh, I've been working really hard on not, uh, not getting so angry about stuff. I, I used to let like really little things bother me. Um, but I've gotten better about it now. And it, but it's worse in some ways because now, for most things, I'm just like, whatever. But then for certain things, I'll just be like, fuck! And there's no in-between. It's just whatever, fuck! And uh, I, have a, I have a Blackberry. I'm not bragging. It's you need to know for the story. Um, <laughs> And it has the trackball in the center, which you need for literally everything on that phone. You have to have the ball to do the shit. And recently, mine has just randomly started. Whenever I press the trackball, it just dials star or pound, alternatingly. And I have to like pop the battery out to fix it. And then the other annoying thing is like I try to delete the star and the pound, and I press delete, and it just types in the number 14. Because that makes sense, because there's a 14 button on my BlackBerry. <laughs> And the other day, I'm driving to work, and I'm running late, and it starts doing that. And I'm just like, fuck, what the fuck, start! I gotta call my boss and let know, like, start, pound, start, pound, no, fuck, delete, 14, 14, 14, 14, fuck, fuck! And I'm just picturing this, like, underpaid Chinese developer sitting in a sweaty room, just being like, ha, 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 ha. fuck you, penny, penny, oh, call Ross, call Ross, fuck you, man.
Hey, thanks you guys. It's been a lot of fun. Give it up for Joe Hafke. How are you guys doing? Good. You guys doing? You guys doing? You doing good? Funny thing, Joe was talking about bears. <laughs> Did you guys know that it takes bears twice as long to get a degree in college? Not only do they sleep through class from October to May, but they don't know English very well. That's a fact. You guys know that Cottonelle commercial with, uh, you know, the bears and they're not very good at, like, wiping their ass? Does anyone else think that they get a bad rap? That's... I'm surprised there isn't a class action lawsuit against Cottonelle by bears. All right. After that, this next guy, he's a funny guy. I love him. I go driving a lot of places with him. I'm glad he graduated from tech because I can hang out with him more. Give it up for Patrick McCarthy. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Has anyone ever worked at a, a retail job? Yeah. yeah, I worked at a pharmacy forever. And um, I noticed a lot of times that like blue collar workers would come walking in, like 11 a.m. on a Tuesday or Wednesday or something. And uh, they buy like a six pack of beer. And I'm thinking, what job were they working? They could just drink alcohol in the middle of the day. And where do I get a job application? I'm honestly working in the wrong profession. I'm just saying, if I could ring up customers with double vision, I'd be a pretty happy employee. But one thing I did like about working at a pharmacy was working the night shift. Because you get to close, and you close up the automatic doors. People are shocked when the automatic doors don't open. It's like... <laughs> and as soon as they see me, they always say the same thing. They're like, hey, I, I just need one item. Just, just one thing? Now look, those doors are not soundproof at all. But I'm on, I'm on the other side going... The mess of things that works. Because there are the other side one, but I just, uh, you can't hear me. Uh, so I tried at another job. I, I uh, was teaching karate to little kids. Yeah, they're adorable. You should see the way they cry when I knock the wind out of them. You know, so you should have done a little block, Jimmy. That's what I'm trying to teach you. Learn quick. I don't know why I got fired. Um, must have been sex. Oh, come on, it's a joke. I never hit them. You're sensitive, that's the problem. Anyway, I'm engaged. You like that segue? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm happily engaged, but my fiance, she speaks fluent Spanish, so when she's talking on the phone, and she doesn't want me to know what she's saying, she switches to Spanish. The only problem is she's teaching me Spanish at the same time, so I start to pick up on my like, key words, and I feel like that's worse. Because by the end of the conversation, I'm totally paranoid. I'm like, okay, either she just told him a recipe for a stir fry, or she's wanting to kill me. Hey, honey, is there a reason you got a knife in your hand? Cutting vegetables? Cool, stir fry. <laughs> knife flies by my head. That is lost in translation. <laughs> ah, oh, fuck it. I'll cut that joke. <laughs> <laughs> Feedback, positive feedback, I like it. Um, no, I hate TV psychics. I hate TV psychics. I've only seen one TV psychic ever read my mind, and that's the Christ donation guy. Because he comes out and goes, now I know you want to change the channel right now. Wow, he's right, click. I wonder what the second half of that commercial's like. I've never seen it. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna leave you with this story. Uh, my freshman year of college, I lived on a dorm, and you know, it's miserable. I had one of those uh, resident advisors that cared so much about underage drinking, wanted to crack down on it. But my freshman year, I broke my leg, and so I was bedridden. And so whenever I needed to use the bathroom, I couldn't go to the bathroom, so I was pissing in Powerade bottles. The only problem is, is my roommate was lazy as hell. So we just had a, a dorm room full of piss bottles. So there's Powerade bottles full of piss. And one day, the RA comes by and thinks he's Swift shit. He's like, oh, I see what you guys got going on here. Yeah, you think you just smuggle beer into here? 
It's like, uh, no dude, that is not fair. He goes, yeah, cut the bullshit, I'm on you, I'm confiscating these. Yeah, he never talked to us ever again after that. <laughs> I'm guessing he was doing a little tampering of evidence. You know, and I can understand why he didn't talk to us afterwards, because you can't hang out with someone after you taste their piss. I mean, can you imagine we went out drinking together, played the Never Have I Ever game? Every time he gets me, it's like, uh, Never Have I Ever drinking Patrick's Piss. As soon as that fear goes down on him, that's the cock block on the night. There's nothing he can explain. It's like, uh-uh, I ain't hooking up with Piss Breath. All right, well, that's my time. I appreciate you guys. Good night. All right, keep that laughter going. Keep that clapping going. I'm putting up the next comic. Keep going, Joey. Keep going, baby.